So in this training video, you'll discover how to draw support and resistance like a professional trader. And by the end of this video, right, you will learn, right, how just a few simple lines on your chart, right, is able to predict, right, market turning points ahead of time. Sounds good, right? And the best part is support and resistance, it can be applied to different markets or different time frame, right? I'm going to show you how to do it on the Forex markets, the stock markets, we will draw it on the higher time frame and the lower time frame. So by the end of this video, you really, right, would master how to draw support and resistance. So sounds good. Then here's what I want you to do right now. Hit the thumbs up button, okay, below my YouTube channel and the subscribe button. So this way, whenever I publish a new training video, you'll never miss another one ever again. So go do it right now. Hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Have you done it? Then let's get started. Now, before I share with you how to draw support and resistance, I first want to show you how not to draw support and resistance. So this is a perfect example of how not to do it. Why is that? Because there's just way too many levels on your chart. When you've got too many levels on your chart, how do you know which levels you want to trade? Okay, you can be buying into support. And if you've got too many levels, the next thing you know, a few uh, pips away, there is another resistance. And you know, you might think that, oh man, I'm so near resistance, I shouldn't enter a trade. So you can see that no, there's just no room for your trade to move because you just put in too many levels, you get analysis paralysis, you don't know which level to focus on, and you get, you know, frustrated. So this is how you shouldn't draw your support and resistance level. Okay, so now the question is, how do you draw it? Let me show you. How I do it is that I use uh, three simple steps, right? That I'm about to share with you. Number one, you want to zoom out your charts, right? You want to see the big picture, right? Once you can see the big picture, you it's much more obvious to your eyes, right? Which are the key levels you should be paying attention to, right? If you're on trading view, I'll share with you later how you can do it. Number two, you want to draw the most obvious level. If the level sticks out, that level matters. If you know you're squinting your eyes, trying to ask yourself, mm, is that a level? Is that not? Then it's not a level. Ignore that, okay? And number three, you want to adjust your level to get the most number of touches. So let me explain these uh, three steps. So over here, this is a typical trading view chart. Let's get started, right? Just click reset chart. Everything is uh, back to uh, its default view. So how do you zoom out your charts? I like to typically zoom out, you know, five to 10 times. So you can use, uh, if your mouse has a scroll, right? You scroll, you scroll down, scroll it down about 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, right? There are some levels here. Let me just remove it. Okay, now we are starting from scratch. So that's the first thing. Zoom out your charts. Second thing, draw the most obvious level. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So from the looks of this, I can see that this is a very obvious level. Okay. This over here is an obvious level. This one over here is an obvious level. This one, I can see this one here. This one over here, pretty obvious as well. Okay, this to me, right, from the looks of it, right now, these are the most obvious levels to my own naked eye. You can notice that I can do it pretty quickly, right? There's no need to ask yourself second guess, right? Because if it's there, it's there. If it's not there, don't waste your time. So I've done the second part, draw the most obvious levels. And the third thing is to adjust your levels to get the most number of touches. What this means is that you want to shift your support resistance, right, where the price hits the level the most number of times. So for example, let's look at this. So for this one over here, I could actually draw it at the absolute highs, but I don't want to because remember, I said that I want it to touch the most number of levels. So actually, if I were to shift it down lower, somewhere here, notice I can get a few number of touches, right? Uh, if you, this one pretty much exceed by quite a bit. So you have one, two, and three. If I want to, I can actually draw another level over here, okay? So now you can see that your support resistance looks somewhat like an area at this point over here. Okay, let, let's continue. I want to adjust this one. So if this one again, I can just adjust it slightly lower and I get more touches, right? Over here, one, one touch, two, three, four, and this one, you know, exceeds by quite a bit. I can draw another level if I wish to, but I want to keep my charts clean. So I'm just going to use one level. This one over here, right? If I just adjust it, right, slightly higher, Okay, notice that here I can one touch, two touch, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine. Quite a number of touches, right? So you can see that this is how I adjust it, right? To let the price touch it the most number of times. Same for this, right? I don't want it to be drawn my level over here at the extreme low. I want to get as many touches as possible to get the price action involved, right? At the level I'm drawing. So if I'm going to shift it up slightly higher, you can see that I got one over here, right? Looking back, one, two, three, four, five, and then six plus this one just broke down okay again same thing for this one adjust it to get the most number of touches i'll draw it something like this or i can just look to the left all right see one touch two three uh, this one didn't really touch a bit if i'm going to shift it up higher i might miss this one out so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to you know take into consideration the recent price action it has more weightage so i want to give in to this uh, recent price action first to get this touch over here okay and we have a few more touches behind same for this one over here, right? I don't want to draw at the extreme low. I push it up slightly higher. Get this touch in involved, right? This one as well. This one has a false breakdown, but I'll just, you know, leave it there. And you look back, you almost got this one as well. So I just shift it up slightly higher as well. So from the looks of it, you can see that right now, the levels on my chart, right? They're much cleaner. And now one look at it, you know which are the key levels that you want to pay attention to and that you want to trade from. So this is first example, right? Uh, let's go to another one. How about pound dollar okay have a look same concept right let's just reset this once once again and do the three step i just mentioned first step zoom out your charts so i'll zoom out just 10 times to keep it consistent right one two three four five six seven eight nine ten right now you're looking at the big picture step number two draw the most obvious levels right let's do it here this is obvious to me this is obvious this is uh, pretty obvious. This one here. This one here. And uh, perhaps this one here. Okay. So now let's do the adjustment. I've already, I've already drawn out the most obvious levels. Notice that I didn't spend time, you know, wondering, you know, is this a level? Is this not a level? None of that. So now time to adjust. So this one over here, I noticed there's this level. If I just look to the left. Okay. I can actually adjust it a little bit higher. Okay. Getting involved with this touch and this one and this one behind okay fair enough this one i'll adjust it right slightly lower taking into account this level this and this and even sometime this one over here in the past for this one here i could adjust it slightly higher okay perhaps something here like this got this level this small one this this involved and also towards the left where I missed this one by the bit, but it's pretty close by as well. Okay, for this level, I'll adjust it. Let's see. You want to get the most number of touches. So I'll shift it down. I would say this one over here would be a, a better one, right? This one I got one touch, two, uh, this one, three, four, this one here as well, five and six. You notice that I didn't put it at this most recent low over here because if I were to do this, right, it's going to negate a lot of touches at the back over here where all this one, where the price just uh, just slides through the level. So I want to adjust it where the price get the most number of touches. So in this case, I, I actually did sacrifice the most recent high. So shifting up here, right, would be a, would be a much better uh, level to draw. Notice that it gets the price action more involved at this level. And finally, at this, uh, not finally, this one over here, I would shift this up slightly higher. One, two, right? You can see over here, three, four, and a few more behind. And similarly for this one over here, I don't want to draw it at, at the extreme low. I'll try to get more touches involved. In fact, up here, I can get this one involved as well. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so that's pretty much right. it, right? On how to draw your support resistance level. Do you want to do one more? Right, just one more, right? Just a quick one. Let's do a dollar yen before we move on, right? Like I said, right, this is so 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 important right go and apply draw the levels and trust me you'll see the markets in a different light it's like taking the red, red pill and blue blue pill you take the blue pill right that's it right you're out of the matrix you see the markets in a different light so dollar yen right same concept right uh zoom out already draw the most obvious levels i'm going to draw this this is obvious to me this uh this this and this Okay, so you can see that I do it very quickly. I just draw the most obvious levels. If it's if it's there, it's there. If it isn't, move on. So time for the adjustment. 
So this one, I'll shift it up slightly higher. All right, I can, this one over here, get involved these two touches, and this one, uh, just ignore this. Not really a touch, but a breakthrough. Then you have this one over here, right? I'm going to adjust this slightly lower. Okay, you can see you involve this level. This one over here, this one, this one, and this one, right? Number of, quite a number of touches. I've got this one as well. I'm going to adjust this slightly higher. So you involve more of the price action. You can see one level, two, one, two, right? Three, then back over here as well. Over here, I'm going to adjust this uh, possibly like this, okay? I can involve this area of the price action as well as this highs over here. And as for this one, I'll shift this one slightly up higher, involving this uh, price action one touch, two, and three, and four. If I go up slightly higher, or this will be a little bit too much as I pretty much ignore the recent low. So I'm going to shift this down lower, getting the uh, this lows involved as well. So that's how I would draw my levels for dollar yen. And there you have it, right? How to draw support and resistance. Okay, so now let's move on to something different. How about the gold market? We go on to a lower time frame, like the two-hour time frame. Okay, same concept. Reset your chart. Uh, zoom out. One time, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? I I I do it ten times, but really, if you want to zoom out fifteen times, twelve times, thirteen times, whatever is your magic number, feel free to go ahead. Uh, then the next thing we'll do is to plot our levels the most obvious one that stick out in front of your face those are the levels that you want to draw so this is uh how i would do it i'll just do it without thinking too much because the more you the more you think right chances are the level is not there so if it's there it's there if it isn't move on quickly okay so i'll just draw what i see which is uh, obvious to my eyes right now okay so once i've drawn it i would then want to make some uh, adjustments some tweaks right to get the most number of touches kind of like you know curve fitting the levels to get the most number of touches, whether the touch can include the body of the candle or the wick of the candle. So for this one over here, I would kind of leave it like this. Okay, so although this one is just one line, right? My mind, right, the way I see it is actually an area. So so let me just see if I can get a tool to draw an area. Uh, where is the rectangular tool? Okay, so something like this. So even though there's one line over here, my mind right, is tuned to see something like this. Okay? But the reason why I don't draw this is because if I were to draw boxes, my, my, my charts would be filled with way too many boxes and it's too cluttered. So I just prefer to have a single line on my chart. But remember, my mind right, is trained to look at these lines as a level. So depending you know, which is your preference, if you want to draw a box, that is fine as well. But I prefer to go with line because it's much cleaner, there's less clutter. Okay, so this is how I would first uh, do this one adjustment. This one here, I would shift this one slightly up higher. One touch, two, three, and four, you can see. Uh, this one here, okay, I think I think that's, yeah, okay, pretty all right. I think there's another level here that I just saw. This one here. Okay, if I just shift this slightly up higher. Okay, I think it's just somewhere about here would be good. Okay, I incorporate this level, this, this, this one, this one, and all this. But I kind of miss this one out over here. Uh, this one here, okay, I think this level got the most number of touches. Okay, shift this one down, sounds okay. Got one touch, two and three, and even four. This level here, okay, I got this one, I'll, I'll shift this one here. Because if I were to draw here, Right, I would miss this one, and this one also is you know, quite way off. So I'll just shift this slightly lower right, in to incorporate this level and this level. Okay, so that's how I would draw for this uh, this gold chart. You can see that it's a lower time frame. The concept is the same, right? Different market, this is a commodity, this is a lower time frame. Hey, it still works. Uh, how about a different market? Let's try one more. Maybe uh, stock, stock markets, shall we? Uh, we can try Apple, okay? Since uh, that's that's always on everybody's mind, Apple. Okay, same concept. Uh, let's go to daily time frame. Okay, uh, reset chart. Zoom out ten times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So again, I'm just going to draw quickly the most obvious level that I see, and then we make the adjustments later on. Okay, so these are pretty much what I have got so far. 
So let's make some adjustments, shall we? So I'll, this one, I'll shift this slightly lower to about here, so I get about a about one, two, three, about four touches here. For this one, I think it's quite okay. Maybe just slightly lower. Okay, so I got, I got the no, I think it's slightly higher. Okay, yep, I got this one as well here. Okay, so one, two. Right, this was almost three. You can shift this one slightly lower. Okay, uh, I'll rather get this recent price action, right? So we can see quite a number of touches here. Uh, this one here, a, I would shift this one slightly higher, right? Taking into account this uh, this level over here. Okay, so there's this, there's this gap over here, a price rejection. You can see this one here. Okay, one, two, and there's a false breakdown. I'll take it as a, I'll just ignore it, then 3 and 4. So, oh yeah, I just adjusted this uh, chart. Let me reset it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? Then we have this level here, right? Nice bounce. And then pretty much got this one too. 3, uh, about 4 here. Then this one back in time, slightly over at this point. Uh, I would shift it down to get, I would say... This one over here. Okay, so you can see that this one, I got this one bounce here. Two, three, four, and five. If I shift this slightly lower, okay, I think uh, it looks it looks better fitted at this level here. Okay, and uh, this one here is quite straightforward. Uh, just shift this slightly higher and you get all the touches at the, at the bottom of here on Apple. Okay, so that's pretty much it, right? I hope all these examples that I've shared with you so far, it gives you a very good, solid idea and foundation right to draw your support and resistance and trust me this one needs practice but the more you practice you realize the better you get the, the more accurate right your levels become so go ahead practice it right you know uh, 20 30 charts charts right each week right and you'll find yourself improving right over time okay so now for those of you who wants to you know uh learn more about you know support resistance price action trading what i suggest is uh, you can go down to my website over here I'll just put on the link, uh, yeah, it's here actually, tradingwithrainer.com. Just scroll down and I highly recommend you get this guide, the ultimate guide to price section trading because now that you've learned how to draw support resistance, right? How do you trade these levels? When do you enter? When do you exit? Okay, what about market structure? So all this, right, will be in this, covered in this guide, the ultimate guide to price section trading, stuff that I have no time to include in this video. And this guide is completely free, right? Just click this orange button, right? And I'll send it to your email address for free. So go and do it right now, tradingwithrainer.com. The link is on top here. Click this orange button and I'll send it to your email address for free. So with that said, I have come towards the end of this video. If you have any questions, right, comment below, right? How do you draw your support resistance? Leave a comment below. And also don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, I'll talk to you soon.